today's adventure is <laughs> clutch replacement. I have a 2012 Honda Civic Si, as I'm sure you saw in the intro. Um, the issue I'm having with this car is that it needs a throwout bearing replacement. But being the kind of guy I am, because I don't halfway do things when it comes to cars, I figure if I have to tear in that deep, I'm replacing everything. So I went totally overkill and bought a Clutch Masters FX400 Stage 4 Clutch, six puck to be exact. And yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. So uh, yeah, let's go. First off, I just wanna say, if at all possible, avoid doing this in the Texas heat. But <laughs> unfortunately for me, time and circumstance don't allow me to take this to a shop to get it done. So we're just gonna have to uh, knock it out the hard way. Sorry, my engine bay looks a hot freaking mess. My car has been sitting for four months waiting for this this um, replacement to be done. Uh, we'll get to that story later as to why it's been sitting for four months, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, so phase one is complete, which that is being I uh, raised the car. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's extremely important that you use properly rated jack stands for performing this type of job or any type of job where you're gonna be under the car. So I gotta be honest, the heat's pretty unbearable today. So it's making me work a lot slower than I'd like to. Um, got the air box off. That was actually more challenging than I initially perceived it to be thanks to those stupid climates. But I mean, what are you gonna do? This stuff's never been removed before and this car is almost 10 years old. So, next thing deal with this as you can clearly see these bushings are beyond life I've actually went ahead and purchased some acuity shifter bushings as well as some acuity uh, shifter plate bolts or, or excuse me the shifter mount bolts that go inside the car I've actually gotten those as well so we're going to be replacing all of that good stuff for a nice crisp clean shift all right so uh, let's let's continue uh, back with a slight update. Got the uh, shifter bushings removed. Turned out to be a little bit simpler than I thought it would be. <laughs> also went ahead and took the battery box out. Yes, this is ghetto. I have to rewire it. It was temporary when I relocated the battery, but that will be fixed before this job is complete. Uh, the next thing that I'm working on now, I got the air box out. I'm getting ready to remove the clutch line. Helpful tip I want to recommend to you guys that anytime you're removing any bolts, if there's a place you can keep them, put them back in their position that way you don't get them mixed up. No size confusings. What? <laughs> confusings, I'm sorry. No size confusions. <laughs> and everything goes where it was originally intended to go. So that's what I've been doing as I've been going about this project, just placing the bolts. I removed the ECU as well because it's definitely in the way. And yeah, I'll get back to you when I make more progress. Everything top side wise disconnected as it should be. Got the wheels off now, getting ready to pop the axle hub nuts and then begin the process of taking the subframe down, taking the axles loose, suspending up the um, steering rack and um, prepare to take the transmission off. I thought this was gonna be a two day process, but it looks like I'm gonna be able to knock it out pretty smoothly, so. All right. Day two. So, um, yeah, we made some progress. I'm getting ready to take the subframe down. Gotta take those out. Take, uh, you know, all the bolts that hold the main main uh, portion of the subframe up. I actually need to take loose the steering rack back there and suspend it up before I actually get ready to completely drop the subframe. Right now, I've just finished uh, taking loose the rear engine mount. I actually have a brand new one um, going with a solid mount. Uh, not only just for the sake of longevity, but it should uh, help performance-wise to keep the engine from rocking around so crazy and keep things a bit more stiff and intact like it should be. Um, which is an, actually a billet piece. I'll show that later once I actually get ready to install it. Um, other than that, everything else on the top side has been taken loose. Once I drop the subframe, the next thing will be actually uh, pulling the axles, which that's a minor task. <laughs> Um, pulling the axles and then once that's complete I'll actually be um, taking down the transmission so we'll uh, <laughs> we'll touch back once that once that gets ready to happen 
All right, amidst another trip to the store and uh, a small break, we got the uh, got the subframe down. Yeah, uh, good thing I wasn't under there because I did it out of order like an idiot. So the bolt I took out, which was one of the last ones, it just slapped the ground once it got loose. But that's all right because I'm probably gonna have to get a little creative with putting it back up there, but we'll get it done. We will get it done. A few moments later. Well, so as I'm sitting here in my home taking a cool off, just wanted to pass along this small word of advice. <laughs> if you can help it, don't do this in the peak of summer. <laughs> or if you have to, find a garage because doing this in a driveway is quite daunting. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to take a trip to the store because there's a few other things I need. I need to get another crush washer for the oil pan which that's another thing I have to do is take the oil pan down and reseal it because it does leak in one spot and I just, I don't like leaks. So I'm gonna have to do that after we get the uh, transmission down. And then from there, um, it'll be installing the clutch and hopefully uh, by tomorrow, if not the end of the day, we'll be able to uh, crank this thing up. Later. Sense, I'll tell you because oh geez man just to show you what's going on I got the axles out of course the the uh, steering uh, steering rack is suspended like I said earlier that was a real pain in the butt getting these axles out like they really need to come up with a better design or something because this it was really stupid especially this one like I actually tried to take this whole thing out of the hub but it's completely seized in there and I don't have an air hammer. Nor do I have the, the funds to actually buy one at this very moment, but I will be investing in one in the future. So with that being said, also I got the oil pan off right now because I need to reseal it like I mentioned earlier. So we'll deal with that later. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on actually getting the transmission down, start cleaning that stuff up. Then I'm gonna seal the, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna put the sealant <laughs> on the oil pan put that back up there first uh you know get all the clutch components down and out the way i already drained the transmission we're gonna clean this crap off because i don't know if it's actually leaking or if it's just built up from years in time who knows well, i'm sure we'll find out shorter than later so with that being said let's get back to it one eternity later we've made some progress i'm sorry i didn't get to film it like i wanted to it was dark and i was kind of in a hurry but transmission is completely down Gonna be taking the clutch off soon, but right now we need to get this transmission cleaned up. So we're gonna hit it with some uh, engine degreaser and go from there. All right. Oh, and before I forget, let me show you what my exact issue was. Yeah, this exploded. Just to show you in detail here, yeah. That's that's not supposed to be like that. This, this thing's toast. This is technically the only problem the car had, but again, as you can see what it took to actually get to this piece, I decided to go ahead and upgrade everything so I never have to touch it again, at least for the foreseeable future. So, yeah. All right, back to cleaning. All right, so here's my car's next lovely piece of jewelry. <laughs> Again, like I mentioned before, this is a Clutch Master Stage 4 FX400 six pump clutch. As you can see, which is actually is bolted in right now, but it's not a, you know, totally secure. I'll show the six pump disc once I actually get ready to put it in. Um, I am using a standard weight flywheel for the fact that I don't have a 
uh, Honda K-Pro to reflash it to take care of the knock issue that happens when you use a lightweight flywheel. Honestly, I'm not really a fan of lightweight flywheels anyway. I know that's contrary to what the the um, the car industry likes to think about, but <laughs> to me, I just I just prefer a heavier flywheel. It just makes sense. I like to have the more heavy duty feel, something that's going to be durable and all that fun jazz. But anyway, let's uh, let's get to taking the stock clutch off, which is right there. And surprisingly, it's actually in good shape for it to be 120,000 miles. I mean, over 120,000 miles. I think it's like um, my car's at like 129 or something like that. But like I said, the issue wasn't the actual clutch. It was the throw out bearing. But if I'm going to have to take a whole transmission down just to get a throw out bearing, I might as well put it in a new clutch anyway. So uh, let's get it cracking. And folks, this is exactly why, <laughs> I mean, this is exactly why I went ahead and bought a new clutch. <laughs> if you can't tell, <laughs> this flywheel is cooked. <laughs> Gee whiz. And this is under stock power, mind you, so this thing has, this thing's seen a rough life. I'm not even going to lie to you, I did abuse it a little bit myself, doing some clutch kicks from from a dead stop, you know, to spin it through first and second gear, all that fun jazz. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, pretend like like this thing hasn't been through it. But this is this is crazier than I ever expected it to be. But that's okay because we have new parts. We have a new flywheel. We have a new clutch bearing because this one is obviously cooked. If you can't tell on the inside of that thing, it has definitely. See if I can get into focus here, sorry. It has uh, definitely seen better days, to say the least. And check out this carnage here. Yeah, this, this clutch plate is, is, sorry. This clutch plate is, is beyond done. Like it's, it's done. <laughs> There's nothing more to say. It is done. It's a miracle I've been able to even drive on this thing for so long. <laughs> like there's nothing there's nothing left to it like it's it's just over it's over with it's it's totally done i got clutch dust all over myself already like it's it's bad man it's bad but anyway let's proceed with getting this flywheel off and then we'll start the reassembly process all right clutch flywheel been removed successfully i'm actually surprised that the rear main seal is actually in really good shape but again rather replace it than and uh, have to deal with it later. So I actually bought a brand new one to go there as well. Um, outside of that, um, as you can see, my reseal is actually tacking up pretty nicely. I, I went kind of uh, crazy on the end of it because um, commonly, at least in my experience, uh, oil pans like to leak on their ends and in the corners. So I did go a little crazy and put a little extra dab here and there. But it looks like it's tacked up pretty nicely. I haven't put any oil back in the system yet because I wanted to make sure that it got a good seal even though I bought the, the RTV Black Instant Gasket Maker. I prefer it over the RTV Gray. I know the RTV, RTV Gray is considered more popular and more proper and all this other crap, but nobody really has time for that to be sitting up curing for 24 hours. There's so happenstance that it got dark before I could finish, so that's why mine was able to cure up anyway. But again, I don't like having to wait on it, so. I just went ahead and used the RTV black. All right, so now we're going to work on getting the pilot bushing out, getting this main, this, uh, excuse me, this rear main seal out, and then we'll start the reassembly process. I just gotta take a quick second and talk about this thing. The, uh, the blind hole puller. This thing is dope. <laughs> Probably one of the best tools I ever bought. Um, I've attempted other clutch jobs in the past and had a really, really serious issue with removing the uh, the uh, pilot bearing. And yeah, this thing, <laughs> in three hits, I got it out. Like, this is nuts. Why did no one tell me about this before? Maybe it's my own fault for not doing enough research, but this is crazy. Like, this is this is great. This is, this is fantastic. This is probably one of the best tools I ever bought. Best money I ever spent. I think I paid like maybe 30 or $40 for this whole kit. It comes with like five different sizes for different applications, ranging from, you know, crankshafts up to uh, pulling wheel bearings, all these kinds of different things. But this is, this is phenomenal. Like, I just gotta say, man, this is probably one of the best tools I've ever bought. All right, man, look, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Torquing this thing back down to 91 pounds sucks. I mean, really, really sucks when you're on the ground. It just, 
it's almost impossible. I almost rounded off one of these bolts. Laying on the ground and trying to torque up bolts to 91 foot pounds is no small order when you're in the heat. Like it's it's well over 90 degrees today. I'm laying on the ground under the car and yeah, I mean it just it just sucks, man. I mean it is what it is. But I mean I'm I'm from Florida, so you know we're kind of used to this whole heat thing, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it's still not a good time. Anyway, uh, I'm going to stick in the alignment tool next. Stick on the uh, six puck uh, clutch disc that I bought. Clean off the flywheel again because I did touch it with my greasy gloves. And uh, hopefully pick on the pressure plate from there. All right, gang. We made some more progress. The clutch is now fully installed. Um, I am kind of bothered by the fact that the clutch alignment tool didn't properly fit into the uh, crankshaft port where the uh, pilot bearing is. I don't know if that's because of the pilot bearing or what exactly, and the fact that it's made of plastic probably doesn't help either. Clutch is fully mounted, and we're going to slowly start beginning the reassembly process of putting the whole car back together. Now, of course, before I actually get it ready to go wheels down, we're gonna do a test uh, to make sure the clutch is properly engaging, you know, all that fun stuff, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, guys. So we've made some progress. I took a small break because it's it's hot as crap. Um, for the sake of not struggling and killing myself, I pulled out my engine hoist that I have to raise the transmission once I have it in the car. What I'm gonna do now is basically reposition this thing, take it off the uh, hoist, slide it under the car, put the hoist hook over the top of the car and then raise it up to the transmission. And then basically give it the old shimmy one, two, and <laughs> slide it onto the new clutch uh hopefully this won't take forever in a day and then um we can start doing the uh reassembly process i'm hoping to finish today but i have no idea how long it's really going to take me it may be another day before i get done but uh we'll see all right guys we made some progress here gotten the transmission fully mounted up in place i actually have to torque down a few of the bolts since we made some adjustments but um, I've actually got the transmission hanging back on the uh, trans mount on top. So pretty much from here, it'll just be buttoning it up. I mean, I, of course I have to deal with the challenge of actually mounting up the uh, subframe, but we'll get it done. Um, other than that, you know, it's, it's kind of on the home stretch. I mean, I'm gonna put in the axles here soon. And then once I get the subframe at least halfway bolted up, I'm gonna do a test hit just to make sure this thing is uh, working correctly. And uh, from there, it'll just be breaking in this week, hopefully. And I'll try to document some of that and get my review and thoughts of the Clutch Masters kit. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. Day three. All right, guys. We're back at it today. It's the next day. We should be wrapping everything up. I just popped this axle in. That was annoying. Um, other than that, like I said, I got to put this other axle back in. And then we'll begin the long... <laughs> stringent process of actually putting the um putting the uh, uh, uh subframe back up once that's bolted in i just have a few harnesses to connect on the top side and uh that pretty much will be it i am going to give the engine a good wash down because it's it's still got grease and crap everywhere that i just don't want to have on this thing but aside from that i think we're good to go um I need to find out what this what this leak situation is about or why it's so greasy right there. I don't know if it's just a seal or what, but it's, it's caked on there pretty heavy. Um, I am going to talk about the Acuity uh, shifter bushings here in a little bit after I get ready to put in the, uh, the shifter mounts, excuse me, the shifter mount bolts that I purchased also inside the car. But um, anyway, I'm going to get back to it and uh, I'll pop in here in a second with some more progress. All right, guys, uh, back with another update. I've gotten the axles put in now. I actually just pulled out this old piece of junk. <laughs> Your engine mount, I mean, just look at it. That that rubber is, is definitely cooked. It's seen better days. And yeah, we're, we're moving on to the new hotness, which is this very nice piece that I purchased from Hasport. I actually got it pretty quickly off Amazon. Uh, but yeah, this is what's going back into place. It should 
It's definitely gonna help with the back and forth rocking and allow the, the torque to travel more so to the wheels and just give a more, I guess you could say more uh, braced rigid feel. Not to the point where it's uncomfortable or unbearable, but it'll definitely help, you know, reinforce some things. Like I said, it helps with the back and forth rocking of the engine, helps with uh, taking care of some of the vibration issues that can cause some internal damage. I'm not going to go full all solid mount because that's just not comfortable for a daily driver. That's more of a race car thing. But this piece specifically is going to help with, uh, with uh, like I said, that, that vibration. So I'm going to go ahead and get this installed. We're going to slowly start proceeding to put the uh, rear, I mean the lower subframe on. All right, guys, so check this out. Um, taking a quick break because the heat is now fully on. But um, basically... <laughs> As I'm slowly mounting up the uh, subframe, it's a real life balancing act, like it's no exaggeration on that because in order to get this thing on, I mean, excuse me, in order to get this thing on and I'm actually out here by myself, I'm having to use two separate jacks. I would have preferred two floor jacks, but this is all I had. My old bottle jack that I had from a previous project and my trusty floor jack that I take with me everywhere I go. But basically what I had to do was more or less line these two up raise them, lower the car again, because I had it up much higher so I could slide under there with ease, and then lower it back down to slide the frame into place, and then in just a few minutes, I'll actually be bolting it down, and then I'll finish putting in the rest of the bolts, and then we can actually do a test to see if this thing actually works or not. Well, of course, I have to bleed the clutch first, but we'll get to that, so be back in a sec. All right, guys, so here's the deal. If anybody decides to go solid mount, just, don't attach the subframe first. Make sure you at least start the threads on this piece of junk because <laughs> uh, it's just, it's bad. It's just bad. Had to do some, some really crazy finagling by raising the, raising the motor, lowering the motor, raise the motor, lower the motor. Unbolt, bolt back in, unbolt, bolt back in. It was just, it was bad news, man. It was really bad news all around. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing, there's not much more to be said about that. Day four. All right, check this out, man. It's been a long four days. The heat has not cooperated. <gasps> None of that stuff. But we've, I had to fast forward because the rain showed up, as you can see. So we're going to um, do our first start and see if I, uh, if I didn't break it. All right, here we go. In. Ooh, that was a, a crispy startup. My car's freaking out because because my uh, wheels are turning and it's screaming that I need to release the parking brake. See if we got ignition here. First gear. Okay, we got first gear. Okay, we got action. Let's see if these things are turning correctly. Sounds like the hubs are spinning. Oh, well, that's not good. Okay, hold on guys. Everything's good. Just needed to bleed the clutch a little bit more. It was, wasn't feeling like it was getting a good grab. Definitely gonna, oh, excuse me. Definitely gonna have to go do some break-in driving between today and, to, I mean, between tomorrow and, and uh, Thursday. <laughs> or whatever day it is, it's hard to keep up these days. But um, as far as everything goes, as far as the shift is concerned, got full engagement. I mean, here we go. We got one, two, Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then reverse. So we're good. Um, the last modification I have to do, which again, like I said, will be sometime tomorrow, is I need to install my shifter, shifter uh, mounting 
bushings that are underneath here. I have to tear all this crap apart. But aside from that, I think we are good. I mean, uh, it's not much more to it than that. This has definitely been a learning experience and a journey. And uh, thank you guys for making it to the end. Uh, <laughs> haven't really figured out the outro thing. I'm sure I'll come up with something when I edit this. Edit this, but uh, just thank y'all. Uh, shout out to Sean Brown for inspiring me to even want to put this out for the internet in the first place. Because you know, I like you know I like the internet, but I'm not a not a, I don't have a presence, I guess you could say, for lack of a better word. Um, just thanks, guys. Thank y'all for checking us out, and hopefully uh, we'll put out some more content in the near future. All right, signing out.